in the place of prayer you receive revelation and when that revelation comes you begin to do according to the precept that was shown you that's what jesus said the miracles that you see me get is because i do what i see my father do so in the place of prayer he is receiving revelation for the work he writes it down and he comes and do what god shows him to do faith that work is dead glory does not just happen you prepare for glory so prepare me a habitation when god anoints you the anointing will lead you to preparation because without preparation there will be no glorification god has commissioned apostle claude azangisa to spread the fire in presence of the holy spirit in the heart of every young person making christ the ultimate personality in their life get set for a word that will set your heart on fire for god and grant you dominion over the affairs of life now apostle claude azangisa let's welcome the man of god pastor rene israel bajan Praise the Lord. Can you clap your hands for Jesus? Praise God. I didn't say you should clap for me. I said clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's my boss. He's my Lord and He's my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for such a privilege and honor. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you are sweeter than the sweet. Better than the best, you are wiser than the wisest of all. You give beauty for ashes, oh holy one, and every move you make is sweeter. It is sweeter than the sweetest. Every life you touch, you make as sweet as you. Sweeter, sweeter than the honeycomb. You are sweeter than the gentle breeze. And every move you make is sweeter, is sweeter than the sweetest. Every life you touch, you make as sweet as you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Precious Holy Spirit, fill this place with your presence. Take charge. Take charge of this meeting. Take charge of everything we're going to see. Let the mind of God be communicated. Let the will of God be done. Let our hearts and minds open. We receive from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats. Thank you. Praise God. I would like to use the board. Is it possible to use the board? Okay. Can somebody help me?
Praise God. I want to appreciate um, the man of God, my brother, for having me to be here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please okay, you can put it there. So I want to appreciate man of God, Apostle Claude, and you clap your hands for me. Praise God. And I want to recognize my brother here, a wonderful man of God, with is such a great anointing. Can you appreciate him also? Thank you. Praise God. I want to thank Pastor Alex. Praise God. And Gloria, Sister Gloria, I want to thank all the leadership of the Awake Ministry. They call you Pastor. Okay, Pastor Gloria. I love the leadership. Awake ministry. Praise God. And I want to thank God also for the wonderful people that He has also given to us in our ministry. I want to appreciate Brother Roland that is here. Wonderful. He's a wonderful man of God. Praise God. And now, there's a reason why I'm calling him Brother Roland. Alright, but he's a man of God. Praise God. We have here Brother David. Brother David, can you stand up so that they will see? Brother David, praise God. And Brother Testimony, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Praise God. I think Brother Tonya was here, but he had stepped out. Praise God. Okay. Ah. Wonderful. Clap your hands for Brother Tonya. Praise God. He's, he's a prophetic worshiper. This guy is so gifted. He's a man of many colors. He's a teacher. He into prophetic worship and he's a wonderful choir director. Music director. Amazing. Praise God. I used to, I used to say that he, he, he's, a, he's like Joseph. He's a man of many colors. Like David. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Twain. Glory be to Jesus. Now I'm going to sing a song and then I will start. Because you see, um, we're talking about the prophetic the training program. Why can I stand here and teach you about the prophetic? Is because that's, that's my calling. Praise God. In 2014, the Lord spoke to me and told me about the calling into the prophetic. And he said, I'm going to teach you some things. I will not allow you to function in that office. I'm going to teach you, teach you, teach you until you fully understand the office. Then I will allow you to function in it. But you're going to function in some means of it. And I've been seeing that. Praise God. I can see, I've seen a lot of prophecies come to pass. Praise God. I've seen God deliver people through the prophetic. I've seen God a lot. Praise God. And um, to me, we start prophesying in 2007. And when I was in Christ in the sea, I would prophesy like crazy. <laughs> During those times. It's just that now I don't prophesy that much like then we prophesy, prophesy, every purpose we prophesy. And I remember that time when I finished prophesying, Claude will also come and prophesy. To the point that people were thinking it was a competition. But it was it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Lord taught me a lot about the prophetic. So much about the prophetic. And the teachings that I receive even make me to be very careful. Because I begin to realize that the prophetic is very, is very dangerous. Praise God. And the Lord said to me, the prophetic and the teaching ministry, these are your major streams. And he told me, they're going to work 100, 100% together. That's what God told me. I didn't understand how is the prophetic and the teaching going to work together 100%. 100%, 100%. He said, as time goes on, you'll begin to understand. And the Lord began to teach me. And I will tell you a secret now. 
I don't teach the way I teach is different. I used to hear God and I teach. That's how I teach. And that's prophet. Praise God. All the teaching that I do, I hear God. And I see spectrum. And I teach. Even as I came and I sat down here, I, he was talking to me. I was here. And he was telling me what I should say. And I realized that that's the way Jesus was. He was a prophet, but that's the way he was. Praise God. And the Lord told me, it is not just prophesying, but helping people to be established in my will. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to tell you what God has been telling me. And some of the things that God had sued me. If I don't have the permission to say them, I will not say them. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's a ministry that you grow. You grow in it. Praise God. And you move from one level to another. Hallelujah. How many of you have a call of God in your life? There's a call of God in your life. Praise God. How many of you now, for those who raise your hands up, you're saying, you raise your hand because you know. What about those who have a calling but they don't know? That's why some of you didn't raise, you didn't raise your hand up because maybe you don't know that you're called. Praise God. Now, how many of you know that God is calling you into ministry but you don't know how to answer? Praise God. All right. So I believe that by the grace of God, we will be able to help some of you. How many of you know this song? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing Sabi added on to you. That scripture, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that I just sang now, in that verse, is a very powerful key. key. It's a very powerful principle. Praise God. How many of you, you want to be successful? Being successful is not about having a car. It's not about having a house and having a very big fat bank account. That's not being successful is about. Success is not about the things you acquire, the things you have. The Bible says a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things which he possesses. That's not how success is uh, is um, is Evaluated, you don't evaluate success by what you are. That's the way the world sees it. So, the world they are after things, they are seeking after things. They seek after things, they seek after money. But God said, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Success is fulfilling. Your purpose. That's what success. The reason why you came here, the reason why God brought you here. If you have fulfilled your purpose in life, you are successful. 
But can I tell you a secret? Can I tell you a secret? Your value is in your purpose. <laughs> Some of you don't understand. Your value. Tell somebody, my value is in my purpose. Do you know Jesus said that if a salt loses its savor, its saltiness, it is what? It is good for nothing. So what is the purpose of salt? Is to give taste. And Jesus said that if the salt loses its taste, it is useless. That means that the value of the salt is in its purpose. And he said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Your value is in your purpose. But not only that, can I talk to you? Everything you require in life, everything you need, a house, a car, everything, is wrapped up in your purpose. If you will walk in your purpose, you will never be poor. It's not possible. You will not be poor. Are you following? So here is the key. The key is the kingdom. Seeking the kingdom of God. If you want to be successful in life, you want to be prosperous, you want to have everything that you require, you want life to be excellent, seek the kingdom of God first. Have the interest of the kingdom at heart. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is that okay? So, don't be church conscious. Don't be denomination conscious. I'm a Catholic, a Baptist, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Baptist. Don't mind this people. Don't be that. Be kingdom conscious. Praise God. It's not about the church, it's not about denomination, it's about the kingdom. Praise God. It's okay. Yeah. We should be kingdom minded. And everything we do, we should do it with the interests of the kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So, I'm going to, I don't have much time, so I'm, I want to cover a lot. You know, I teach, when I teach, I teach in series. I don't teach one message. I teach in series. And my series lasts for Three months, four months. I've been teaching a subject, gifts and callings. Keep that for more than six months now. It's going to seven months now. I'm still not finished. And I said, you know what? This thing, I have to stop somewhere because I can take this into one year. So that's the reason why I will never go to with everything because they're so limited. In just one hour, 30 minutes, I can. I need to see a little. Just, just a little. Praise God. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share with you um, basic knowledge. Basic knowledge about the prophet. The prophetic is so important. It is so, so important. And the prophetic is a vital part of the end time move of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. It is because a prophet in the Bible that is called Joel gave a prophecy in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and he said it shall come to pass afterward and when he said afterward when you go to first peter chapter 2 because peter quoted that verse that scripture in reference to the coming of the holy spirit the day of pentecost and he said that this thing you are seeing that the holy spirit came on the day of pentecost and we they were off with the holy ghost and the Spirit is speaking out he said this thing you're seeing is the fulfillment of the prophecy of joel 
But Peter, when he was quoting that scripture, he didn't say afterward, he said in the last days. So that means that when Joel said it's a come to pass afterward, he was talking about the last days. And that means that the last days began when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. And what the prophecy says is that God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And when God said upon all flesh, it means I'll pour out my spirit upon every human being. All flesh means every human. Whether you are black or white or yellow or purple or green, it doesn't matter. The Holy Ghost will fall on you. The Holy Ghost is not racist. Even Chinese people receive the Holy Ghost. Indians, whichever color you are, he said, all flesh. He didn't say softly, all flesh. I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Then he said, and your sons and your daughters who prophesy. That is the result of that outpouring. He said, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Now, vision, dreams, and prophesying, they are all connected with the prophetic. Praise God. That means that the move of the Holy Spirit in this end time, in these last days, is a prophetic move. So there is a prophetic movement. Are you following me? And this prophetic movement is not only for men of God who are called prophets. It's for everyone. Every one of you can prophesy. And so to prophesy. Praise God. A lot of people don't understand the prophetic but I believe by the grace of God today, you will get a little knowledge about it. Praise God. Is that okay? So, it's a move of the Holy Ghost. The prophetic is so vital. But the prophetic also, it is dangerous. It is dangerous because Satan also counterfeited. Satan has a counterfeit of the prophecy. And the counterfeit of the prophetic that the devil has is what is called divination. Divination. Are you playing this? The devil also prophesies. If you think I'm joking, you can go to some marabouts, they will call your name. They will tell you where you live. They will even tell you why you came. Praise God. So now you can see that the devil also can prophesy. Am I lying? So, Marabos, they, they cannot call your name. Eh? They can even tell you where you live. If you don't have, if we don't have such Marabos in the Gambia here, go to places like Sierra Leone, like Nigeria. In Nigeria, in Nigeria, there are some Marabos who are now pastors. You know what they do? Weak doctors, duty priests in suit. And they have churches. And you come to them, they will even tell you the food you ate here last night. They will tell you. Because they are operating with a spirit that is called a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is a spirit that familiarizes with you. He knows everything about you. He follows you. So he can reveal your past to them. But where the prophetic is, it's not telling the past or telling somebody's name. That's not where the prophetic is. The prophetic is where you're able to tell someone his future according to the plan of God. So the devil cannot prophesy. Do you know why? He does not know the mind of God. If he doesn't know the mind of God, he doesn't know it. So just because somebody is calling your name it doesn't mean God used that. He used the coin of names, and which is very important. Praise God. For example, God said, Moses, Moses. He called his name. To tell Moses that I know you. When God calls your name in the prophetic, he's telling you, I know you. That's what, it, that's what it's just simply telling you. Okay, let me ask you. If I call your name now, you don't you know your name? Ah, so why am I calling your name then? Am I calling you because you don't know your name? I'm calling your name to let you know that I know you. So God said, I know you by name. So that's where the calling of name is important. In the prophetic, I'm not discrediting that. It's 
very important. But I'm telling you, the devil can also do it. Praise God. Are you following this? Now, there is a danger in the prophetic. The danger in the prophetic is that the devil has brought in a counterfeit of the prophetic. And the counterfeit is so surreal that it will take a very, very sharp discernment to tell. So, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a need for discernment. Discernment is very important. It's the most important thing in the prophetic. You need to sharpen your discernment as a Christian. Praise God. Are you feeling? Because false prophets, they also call names. In fact, Jesus said they would do so crazy miracles that even the very elect, if it was possible, they would be deceived. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we together? Um, Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to follow the leading of the Spirit. So there is need for discernment. There is great need for discernment. So I'm going to just talk about the basic things about the prophetic. Hallelujah. The prophet is dangerous. Oh, Jesus. Can I ask you a question? The internet, is it good? Is the internet good? It's very good. But the internet is very dangerous. That means that if you are using the internet, you have to make sure you have a very strong antivirus. Otherwise, there are some things that might corrupt your computer. So that, that's the way the prophetic is. When your spirit is open in, into the prophetic, make sure your antivirus is very strong. Because you can pick something that is not from God. So you need discernment. Discernment is required. There is need for discernment. Are you friend this? Now, let me not go there. Let me go to the basics. What is the prophetic? What is it? What, when we say the prophetic, what are we referring to? Now, the prophetic refers to anything that relates to prophecy. Anything that relates to prophecy. Or a prophet. Anything that relates to prophecy or a prophet. That's what we refer to as a prophetic. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Is that okay? So now, what is prophecy? Now, the word prophecy and the word prophesy are related. Okay? It's very simple. Prophecy is a noun. Prophesy is a verb. You get it? So, prophecy is simply what is said. What is said. For example, now if I say, if I say, God said that He is going to bless you beyond your imagination. Now, what is the prophecy? What God said, He will bless you beyond your imagination. That is the prophecy. But me now speaking, the act of me telling you that is prophesying. You see, so that's the act. Is the act of speaking. Prophesying is the act of prophesying. Prophecy is what he said. So they are connected. Is that okay? Can you separate the two? Huh? Can you prophesy without prophecy? Can you give a prophecy without prophesying? <laughs> they, 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 they connected it's the same thing. Is that okay? So just understand it's the same thing. It's just a verb now. Is that okay? Now what is prophecy? What is prophecy? That's what I want to find now. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Is that okay? Prophecy is the revealed word of God. Is the revealed word of God. Okay. Can I can I take action? God knows everything. The prophetic. God is prophetic. The prophetic is his nature. The prophetic is the nature of God. Do you know why? Because God is omniscient. That means that he knows everything. He knows the past, the present, and the future. God knows everything about you. He knows everything about everything, including you. He knows the past, present, and future. And not only that, he is a talking God. He is a speaking God. He is a God that speaks. Are you feeling me? And you need to understand that man was created to hear God. Man was created to hear God. That's why the very first day God created man, the first thing he did was what? He spoke to him. And God said to them. He spoke to him. And the Bible will let us know that Adam knew the voice of God. Because Adam had fellowship with the voice of God. He was not having fellowship with God. It was the voice of God. Because the the voice of God came the garden walking. And Adam heard it. And he recognized that voice. Man was created to relate with God's voice. That means that man, it's man himself is prophetic. So prophecy is the revealed word of God. It's the revealed word of God. Why is it the revealed word of God? Revealed word of God. Why is the revealed word of God? It's because it is not everything that God knows that he tells you. Is it everything that God knows that he tells you? The Bible says the secret things belongs to God. But the things that are revealed unto us and our children. So that means that when God speaks to you about something, he reveals to you about that thing. Is that right? But what about the one he knows that he tell you? So it becomes the revealed word of God. Is that okay? So prophecy is the revealed word of God. Now that, that, that definition is not complete yet. Praise God. It's the revealed word of God and it can be God's word concerning the present or God's word concerning the future. When God reveals to you concerning the present or the future. Now, it is the revealed word of God that is spoken forth or declared. Is that okay? That is spoken forth or declared, filling the will, the counsel, and the mind of God. Praise God. So it reveals the will, the counsel, and the mind of God. And that's the reason why the devil cannot prophesy. Because he doesn't know the mind of God. He doesn't know the will of God. He doesn't know the counsel of God. So all these false, false prophets, what they do is that they call your name because that is very spectacular. And people are carried away by that. Me, when you call my name, I'm, I'm not carried away. I listen. I want to know what are you going to say now? Next. That's what I'm going to judge because I already, I already know my name. If I eat plasters last night, you tell me you eat plasters. I know I eat plasters. So I will not need to judge that. I already know. The one that you're telling me now, concerning the future, that is the one I'm going to judge. To see. And some people, they don't know this thing. They don't understand this thing. Because the Bible says, if you go to, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Bible says, let the prophet speak. Let the prophet speak. At least two or three at most. He said, and let another prophet judge. That means prophecy needs to be judged. It must be judged. But some people, they don't want that. They, 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 they don't want to hear that. So me, I judge every prophecy. I judge it. Praise God. So, are you together with me? Praise God. 
So it is the mind of God. It reveals the mind of God, the counsel of God, the will of God. Now, prophecy is a message. Is a message or a discourse. You know what a discourse is? A discourse has to do with like expressing something in speech. Okay? You are expressing something in speech. Praise God. So it can be a discourse. Sometimes when God is talking to you, he's expressing to you what he feels and what he thinks. Praise God. His thoughts. So it's a message, a discourse. It can also be a declaration or an utterance emanating from divine inspiration. Praise God. A discourse, a message, a declaration or an utterance emanating from what divine inspiration. That means that for you to even prophesy or receive prophecy, you need to be inspired by God. Hallelujah. Are you feeling it? Praise God. And it can be specific or generic. A prophecy can be specific. It can be generic. It can be personal, it can be general, it can be direct, and it can be indirect. Praise God. So, if you are praying now, if you are praying, and God speaks to you directly in your spirit, is that not a prophecy? But what's that? That's a direct prophecy. But if God speaks to you through me, and I say, God, see, I should tell you, that's an indirect prophecy. So, what some people needs. What some people are, are, are familiar with it. I need somebody to prophesy to me. No, no, no. You can hear God directly. Praise God. You can hear God directly for yourself. Are you feeling this? Praise God. Now, now there are some prophets who will not want you to hear this. But me, my assignment is different. Okay? Praise God. I hope I'm communicating. Okay. Praise God. Now, prophecy is what God has said past. What God says present or is saying continuous present what God said what he said now and what he is saying so that means prophecy is in the past present and the future praise God Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Dear Jesus, Holy Spirit. Amos 3 chapter, Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Is somebody there? Amos chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible says, The lion had roared, who will not fear? The Lord had spoken, we can't but prophesy. Praise God. So, when we prophesy, it means that God has spoken. Are you feeling this? When we prophesy, it means that God has spoken. So, Prophecy is what God has said, what he say, or what he is saying. And prophesying is saying what God has said. So, I hear what God say, and I rehearse his very words. Now, that's the reason why the prophets in the Old Testament, they will say, Thus saith the Lord. Why are they saying, Thus saith the Lord? Do you know why they're saying, Thus saith the Lord? Because they were not the only prophets. 
there were other prophets who were called prophets of Baal and prophets of this, prophet of that, and prophet of that. So there are lots of prophets. So to tell you that this prophecy I'm giving you is not coming from other prophets, it's coming from the Lord Jehovah. So they will say, Thus saith the Lord to tell you that this one is not coming from the other God, it's coming from Jehovah. So they will call the name of the Lord to tell you the source of the prophecy. Is that okay? So it is rehearsing the word of God, saying what God has said. So prophecy is basically the revealed word of God. It's what God has said. Praise God. So what is God saying concerning your situation? What is God saying concerning your life and your future? What is God saying concerning your marriage? What is God saying to the church? What is God saying? That's prophecy. And that is very, very important because it reveals the mind of God. It reveals the will of God. It reveals the counsel of God. That's, that means the plan, the whole plan of God. There's the counsel of God. Praise God. Are you playing this thing now? So, do you now understand what prophecy is? Do you get it? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, these are just basic things. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. So prophesying then is saying what God has said. It is the act of speaking the message that you have received from God. Declaring the mind of God and establishing his counsel. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, how you receive, because when you prophesy, you are prophesying, you are speaking forth the message that you have received from God. Now, how you receive that message differs. Because God speaks in diverse ways. There are diverse ways that God speaks. God is a master communicator. He is not limited to only one way of speaking. He can speak to you in many ways. And I don't want to focus on how God speaks to, to, to today. I don't want to focus on that. Because we can go up to 15. 15 ways that he speaks. But I don't want to focus on that. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there are some ways that God speaks. If you are not trained in the prophetic, you'll be confused. There are simple ways and there are ways that... Do you know, in communicating, in God communicating, there is what we call the sound of God. In the sound of God, huh? God can, God can just, somebody can just take a trumpet and do... And you said, I know what he's saying. And that is a little bit difficult. That's why you see some people, they can take a sofa and they will blow it and the sofa is prophesying. Those are called quotes. quotes. Those are quotes. Praise God. And that one, we don't want to even touch it because it's deep. It's very, very deep. Praise God. Now, the prophecy is in two folds. Prophecy is in two folds. Huh. Oh, this is powerful. I just had something. The Spirit of God just said something. Now. That's the way I teach you. I only I hear and I talk. Praise God. You just say something now. Wait, that's that's powerful. That's amazing. Let me see that. Let me see it. Okay. Let me write. You know what he just said? Let me let me tell you what he just said. It is amazing how God talks. Listen. He said something interesting. Forth speaking and forth telling. These are the two aspects of prophecy. Now, what the Spirit of God just said to me now, He just whispered to me. He said to me, the forth speaking part of prophecy, that's where the prophetic is. That is, He said, that is the vital aspect. And he told me the reason why is because God can reveal to you about the future. 
and if he reveal it to you, it will not be a prophecy until you speak it forth. Do you know God can reveal to you something about the future? He reveal it to you. That's foretelling. It's like reveal to you about the future. But if you keep quiet and you don't say it, it's not a prophecy. Until you speak it forth. So even in forth speaking, you can foretell. There can be foretelling in the forth speaking. And that's the reason why the word prophet, the word prophet is from the word, is a combination of two words. Pro and is it's from the word pro for me. And it means to speak forth. That's what it means. A prophet that does not speak is not a prophet. You see, so this is where, these are the two dimensions of the prophet. You have two, 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 two aspects of the prophecy. Forth speaking and foretelling. Now, let me explain this to Praise God. Is that okay? Are we together? Am I, am I helping you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Go to Wait. Go to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 31. 1 Corinthians 14, 31. Now, this, this has to do with this has to do with the gift of prophecy. And this has to do with The prophetic ministry. Are you, are you following me? Now listen. Hello. Listen to me. You know, I, this this one, this one is very important. This one. This one has to do with the gift of prophecy. And the gift of prophecy is very important because the Bible says that it edifies the church. Fort speaking have to do with the gift of prophecy. That is speaking forth the message that you receive from God. Speaking forth the word of God in your spirit by divine inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I read this. So the Bible said the Bible said the holy men of God speak as they were moved. You see, it's speaking for now in fort speaking fort speaking is general while for speaking or foretelling is specific because foretelling always have to do with prediction you're telling what's gonna happen in the future which has not already happened I've learned it but in fort speaking you can also foretell for example, now, in speaking forth, there can be a foretelling in it. But it's not only limited to that. Forth speaking also can also refer to prophetic preaching. It can refer to prophetic teaching. What I'm doing right now to you is for speaking. It's for forth speaking. That's what I'm doing right now. I see. So, some people, they think that until you prophesy, you're not a prophet. Prophesying does not make you a prophet. Can I ask you a question? Was Abraham a prophet? Tell me how many times he prophesied. Okay, I'll come there. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll come there very soon. So you see, thought speaking is general. Are you following me? 
Do you know? If I come and I stand and I and I have an inspiration to say something, to say something, and I come and I stand and I said, we should be careful. We should be careful. We should trust in God. Let us not do this. I did it. And I gave an exhortation. Because I had the inspiration to do that. And when I finished saying that, I finished somebody say, oh, thank you so much. You, you really spoke to me. Do you know you are a professor? So that's why some of you think you are never prophesied. You have prophesied several times. And you don't even know. That is false speaking. So people think the deception that you see the devil is doing something right now. What he's doing right now is this. He's making people to think that until you call a name, you know you have not prophesied. So because of that, everybody is now into this desire of calling names. And sometimes people the desire is even so much that they will want to go and touch something so they can call names. You don't need to call names to prophesy. You can prophesy without calling names. I can't tell you to it. Can't you say sometimes the people who prophesy without calling names, their prophecy make no more impact than the one who call names. So at the end of the day, our focus should not be on the spectacular. Our focus should be on the impact that we are making on people. Praise God. Okay, 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 okay. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31. Look at this in the book of Do you know what God to be one day? I was praying the Lord to me. A time is going to come. I'm going to send you to churches around the world to put order in my house. Because a lot of people, they are abusing prophets who go there and put them in order. That was what they said to me. Praise God. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. First Corinthians 14, verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. All of us can prophesy. One by one. If you think I'm joking now, huh, we can do it. Before we close now here, all of us will, you have partner. Each person will prophesy to your partner. If I just say a simple prayer, simple prayer, after the prayer, we do some worship, all of you will receive a prophecy for that person. I did it, I did it. We did it when we were having a camp, a, a youth camp. Even somebody, huh, who don't know anything about Bible, was prophesying. Everyone can prophesy. He said, you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn. That means through prophecy, you can educate. You can admonish. You can enlighten someone. He said, and all may be comforted. Praise God. So that is what, what is that? That is the gift of prophecy. For, for speaking. Is okay. Now, foretelling is it means to tell what is going to happen by according to the predetermined counsel of God. What does mean is that before anything happens, God already destined it. God already planned it. For example, now, Isaiah said, he said, a virgin shall be with a child. And he shall give birth to that child, and that child shall be called Emmanuel. Now, what was Isaiah doing? He was foretelling of what was going to happen according to the plan of God. So, foretelling is you are telling what's going to happen in the future according to the plan of God, according to the counsel, predetermined counsel of God. Now, the counsel of God is in two dimensions, the cancel of God. You have his, his immutable cancel. And you have his cancel that is subject to change. There is a cancel of, you can't change it. It's immutable. 
but there's a counsel of God that can be changed. I can give you an example. Now, God told, Isaiah told uh, Hezekiah, you're going to die. Set your house in order, you're going to die. That's God's counsel. But he changed it. He prayed and he changed it. God said, okay, I'm going to change it. Are you playing this? So that's the foretelling. So these are the, and that has to do with the what? The prophetic ministry. Is that okay? Hallelujah. So I've explained what is prophecy. Is that right? How many of you understand what I explained? Do you get it? Now let's go to number two. Tell somebody number two. Number two, we're going to deal with the realms of prophecy. Or the realms of the prophetic. This one is going to be powerful. My God. Huh? This is, this is going to be powerful. This one. This one I feel like preaching at some point. There are five realms of the prophetic. And when I mean realm, I'm talking about areas. There are five realms of the prophetic. Praise God. Number one. The word of prophecy. That's the first realm. The first realm of prophecy is called the word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter one. I'm going to read from verse sixteen. How many of you remember when Jesus Christ took Peter, James, and John, and he climbed the mountain with them? He climbed the mountain with them. And why he took Peter, James, and John is because there was a confusion among his disciples. Because the Pharisees, they came and they confused them. They asked them, this Jesus you are following, you think he is the Messiah, but he is not the Messiah. Because the Pharisees, they knew the scriptures. They, 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 they like, what do you mean? He said, haven't you read in the scriptures, before Messiah will come, John the Baptist is going to confess. Sorry, Elijah. Elijah is going to confess. Before Messiah will come. Elijah will confess. So they said, they became confused. They said, they said, have you seen Elijah? They said, no. They said, so he's not the Messiah. They became confused. So when Jesus saw it, he left all the other nine and he took three. And he climbed with them to the mountain. And the Bible says, he was praying together with them. And the Bible says, and as he prayed, he was transfigured before them. And when he was transfigured, they looked and they saw Elijah. And they saw Moses. And they had a voice. And the voice said, the voice came from heaven. In fact, Peter said, the voice came from the most excellent glory. God spoke from heaven. God the Father. God the Father spoke. He said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So when Jesus came down, Peter said, but why did the Pharisees say that Elijah will first come? He said, Elijah came first. But they didn't even recognize him. And they knew that he was talking about John the Baptist. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. You can read the Bible and understand it in your head. But when you don't have a revelation, it's dangerous. It's dangerous if you don't have a revelation. They had knowledge of the Bible in their head, but they don't have a revelation. The Pharisees. So I want you to listen to what Peter said here. Look at what Peter said here. In verse 16, Peter is talking to these Jewish believers. This is Jewish believers he's writing to. And he said to them, and he said to them, for we have not followed cunningly devised peoples. We did not follow deceiving stories. These are not stories. These are not mere stories. These are not fables. These are not myths. These are he said, look at what he said. 
He said, when we make known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. The word majesty means his splendor. Why? Because Jesus Christ, God came to them in ordinary human flesh. So they look at him. He looks so ordinary. He said, this is messy. No, 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 no. He said, I'm the son of God. They say, you, you look like us. You look so ordinary. I say, you're the son of God. They didn't know that that flesh he put on was the veil. Was the veil. And behind the veil was the glory. So what he did was he climbed the mountain. When he climbed the mountain, he pulled the veil. And they saw his majesty. The Bible said that his face shined like the sun. Ah, they said, oh. Peter said, we are, we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw him when he transfigured before us. He said, so we're not telling you stories. It's not mere stories. It's not fables. Cunningly devised fables. Then he now continued. Look at it. He continued. Hey, he continued and said, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. You know, do you know what's the excellent glory? The glory that emanates from the throne. He said, that's where the voice is coming from. He said, the voice, he said, such a voice came from the excellent glory. And look at what he said next. Look, look at what he said next. He said, look at this. Watch, watch here, watch here. He said, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, and this voice which came from heaven, we heard. We heard when we are with him in the holy mount. Peter said, we heard the voice of God from heaven. The voice of God came from heaven and spoke to us and we heard the voice. But look at what he said next. I want to follow what he said next. Look at what he said next. He said, and we also have a most so word of prophecy. Oh, God. Hey. Listen to me. Listen to me. Peter had the voice of God and yet he said the voice I had is not enough. Why? Because there is a most so word of prophecy. What he's saying is this. He say, what he's saying is this. What he's saying is this. Even though I had the voice of God, there is a more so word of prophecy. He said, would you do well to take him unto as a light that shined in a dark place? He said, until the day dawn and the day arise in your heart. Look at this. And what is he referred to as the most so word of prophecy? He said, it is called the prophecy of the scriptures. What he's saying here is this. That means that we already have some prophecies that we are spoken by holy men of God. That means this we are prophets. He said, for so, the prophecy did not come by the will of men. He said, and no prophecy of any is, is of any private interpretation. He said the prophecy did not come by will of men, but the holy men of God speak as we are moved by the Spirit. So that means that these prophets of all they look God's given them a revelation of Jesus Christ and they prophesied concerning Jesus. They spoke concerning him and the things they said, they were recorded in the Bible. They were recorded. That's the word of prophecy. And Peter is saying, we have a most so word of prophecy. Now what he's saying is that although we hear the voice of God, the voice of God is not enough. Why? Because we have a most so word of prophecy and the word of prophecy confirmed the voice. Listen, listen, the word of prophecy, let me sit down, sit down, let me. The word of prophecy, it refers to the prophecy of the scriptures. What God has said. If you go to Romans chapter 16, let me say this, Romans 16. Romans 16. <laughs> Do you know how powerful the prophecy of the scriptures are? The word of prophecy is so powerful, let me say. Romans chapter 6. Verse 25. Romans 16 verse 25. 
Look at this. Ita tu de begede should be naka. Verse 25. Look at what Paul said here. He said, now to him that is of power. Verse 26. Romans 16. Let me start from verse 25. He said, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Now listen. Listen. Can I tell you? Do you know the whole revelation of Jesus Christ? In the New Testament. That means that we preach. Every day Peter preach, all of them, every day preach, it came from the scriptures of the Bible. Even Paul's message about justification came from his prophets. Because a prophet that is called Habakkuk said that just and live life. He prophesied it. That's where Paul got the revelation from. I believe we think about justification. Everything they preached came from the scriptures of the prophets. Let me ask you a question. The apostles, when they were preaching the gospel, they didn't have Peter's life. From where from where were they preaching the gospel from? From the prophets. The word of prophecy. Because everything that God is going to do, he has already sent to the prophets and it is documented. So Peter is saying we have a most so word of prophecy. And that's a principle in the prophetic there. That means that anytime you hear the voice of God, the word of prophecy has to confirm it. If you hear the voice of God and what you heard is contradictory to what God has already said in the word of prophecy, it's not of God. So, when we talk about the word of prophecy, we are dealing with the foundation of the prophet. You have to understand the prophecy of the scriptures. You have to be grounded in the prophecy of the scriptures to be able to function in the prophetic. Are you feeling? Because God will never say something that does not agree with what he has already said. So when God said, this is my beloved son, he said, we have a muscle of our property because that word they have confirmed what God said. They confirmed. Did he say, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Praise God. Some of us, we're going to win some Jews. You know why we're going to win them? Jewish people, they don't believe in the New Testament. So how are you going to win them? Only, you have to pick Old Testament to win them. If you show them Jesus, they will believe you. The word of prophecy is so important. I have to give you an advice now. If you want to focus on the prophet, be grounded in this book, the Bible. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. I spent hours studying this book. Why? Because before John could prophesy, he had to read the book. This book. You have to read it. You must be counted in the word of prophecy. Anytime you see a prophet who can call names and prophesy to this book, he's not grounded in scripture. That prophet is that prophet is in danger because he himself will deceive. Is that okay? Praise God. I don't know whether I can go to some. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two is the spirit of prophecy. The book of Revelation, everything that John saw, it was revealed to him by an angel. Everything that John saw in the book of Revelation was revealed to him by an angel. And after everything now, he wanted to fall down to worship the angel. 
What did the worship the angel? Now, I went, oh, 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 thank you, Holy Spirit. We have to be careful. Everything that John saw was revealed to him by an angel. And John was so, so caught up. He was so, 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 so carried away by the revelation that he wanted to worship the angel. And the angel says, See that you do it not. He said, Worship God because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The angel said, Don't take your attention on me. Set your attention on Jesus. That means every prophecy will set your focus, your attention on Jesus. Anytime you see a prophet prophesying to you, and it's time to get your attention to him, it's not a genuine prophet. Today, prophets want people to worship them because they prophesy. Prophets will fall down and kneel down and say, My father. The Jesus Christ that I see, be careful. And they say, yeah! They start doing like this. They don't have the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy drop people to who? Jesus. Not the person. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Do you know what he's dealing with here? Do you know what's the spirit of prophecy now? This is very important. Listen to me. What's the spirit of prophecy? The spirit of prophecy is the source. Is the source of prophecy. Brothers, listen to me. When you receive a prophecy, huh? don't judge the person giving the prophecy. Judge the source. Do you know why I said judge the source? Do you know why? So, look at the false prophets are only. People who are from the devil. They say, people who are from God, they are the first prophets. 400 prophets in the Bible prophesied that it was the Spirit of God, but it was a nice spirit in the Bible. So, if you want to judge the individual, you will miss it. Because there are some people who are men of God, who are anointed, they speak in tongues. But what they are saying is not going from God. So you judge the source. Huh? Because for somebody to prophesy, he's receiving the revelation from someone. So the spirit of prophecy is source of the prophetic word. And the source of the prophet, and the source of prophecy is the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of prophecy. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. And what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? What is the intent of the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, He will testify of me. That's what He said. The Holy Spirit, every, all that He wants to do is to testify of Jesus. So His intent is to testify of Jesus. So if He gives you a prophetic word, that prophetic word is to testify Jesus, is to reveal Jesus. I see. So every genuine prophecy that is coming from God, that prophecy will point you to Jesus Christ and draw you to Him. Not draw you to self. Jesus made a very remarkable statement in the Bible. He said, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. He said, But him that seeketh the will, him that sent him. He said, The same is true. And there is no unrighteousness in him. A true prophet of God pointed to Jesus Christ. Like, just like the way the angel point John to Jesus. I reveal all this to you, but the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Some of, some of us here who worship prophets and put them in the place of God because they prophesy. So you have become so lazy now to a point that even if you want to know what is God saying concerning your marriage, you have to go and seek for your prophet. Why can't you kneel down and he will talk to you directly? I told you that many people don't like this. Praise God. I don't want people to seek. I want people to seek. 
when I start to talk, I want to beat Jesus so well. But when I finish, he knows me. Because it's not about let me ask you a question. The messenger and the message and the center who is king of God. Who is great? The center. Now let me ask you. The messenger and the message that he is sent to, who is greater? The message, because it is the message that makes him a messenger. So, 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 why should, why should I go and say, look at me, when I'm sent? Tell somebody, it's all about Jesus. I see prophets prophesy. They prophesy until they finish prophesying. Nobody gives his life to Christ. Ah! I said, hey, something is wrong. Because the spirit of prophecy is not operating. When the spirit of prophecy is operating, when you are finished, people say, I want to give my life to Christ. Because we testify of Jesus. So the Holy Ghost is the source of the prophetic. It, I wish I had that. I would have shown you in the Old Testament how that is the source of the prophetic. That for even prophets to prophesy, the Spirit of God had to come upon them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Am I communicating? Dear Jesus. I, I, you know, you know, uh, Let me go there. Let me not go there. Let, let me go there. Because of time. Sorry, I hope I'm not with you all the time. Okay, how, how much time do I have left? The gift of prophecy. That's number three. The gift of prophecy, you will find it. First Corinthians chapter twelve. In First Corinthians chapter twelve, there are nine gifts. Hello. There are nine gifts. Now, I was looking to a man of God, and he said the gifts of the Holy Spirit they are not nine. They are more than nine. And he said Paul only said nine because that's the only one he know at the time. And I said, he's a very great prophet of God. I said, I said, I disagree with you, sir. There are nine gifts. Of the Holy Spirit. The problem is, you know the difference between spiritual gifts and gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are spiritual gifts, but they are not, they're not the only spiritual gifts. They are other spiritual gifts. Righteousness, and life, grace. Because spiritual gift is a gift that you cannot see your eyes. Have you seen another life? Yes. Have you seen righteousness? It is given to you. But the gift of the Holy Spirit is nine. And these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are so powerful. They are tools. Tools. That's what they are. Tools. They are tools. They are not toys. Some people, they play with prophecy. They use prophecy to do adventure. Prophecy is not for adventure. You can't be playing with people's life and people's story. You come and stand and say, I see this. I see a woman. I see this. But what you are seeing is not accurate. And you are messing up somebody's life. It's not a toy. If you don't receive anything, sort of. And go and sit down. If you receive a message and you are not sure of what you are receiving, keep quiet until you have a complete understanding of what you are saying. Because you are playing with people's system. You know, I was playing with my aunt. My aunt. She had a she had a fiance. In fact, they did. Uh, so I'm married. The man from 
For four years, there was no communication. For four years. So, see, I waited for this man, waited for communication. One day, I went to pray with her, and she told me, you know what, I'm, I'm giving up on this man. I want to move on. I said, what? He said, because another man of God told her that God says to tell you that that man has half an order over woman. He has gone, move on with your life. So you told me. You know what you told me? I said, okay. So we pray. We, we, I said the word of God. When you do that, I said, let's pray. We just hold hands to pray and the word of God. And I heard what God said. I said, Father, hey, this one is dangerous. Because I understand that with prophecy and prophesying also comes accountability. When you prophesy, you become accountable for this. I knew, I knew that in fact. So I said, this is risky. I said, Lord, the Lord was, the thing was so strong in my spirit, I could not hold it back. I said, the Lord says to tell you, this man is going to come back. And he is your husband. And God has a plan for you together. And when I said it, she believed. Now, guess what now? After I said it, six months, nothing happened. The man is gone. Yeah. Now I have to go and say, Father, if this is the couple pass now, this man is going to believe me. I said, I pray, Father, Father. I pray. God said, why are you praying? Let, let, let me tell you something. Do you know the reason why we don't want to profit? Let, 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 let me tell you a secret. Why we are afraid to do what God said. Do you know why we are afraid? Because we are trying to protect our integrity. But if you have nothing to lose, you don't care. You will say it. So, I'm like, if this is God, they will say, I'm a liar. I will say, God say, why did you get? I'm not the one who cares. You just leave it. I stop. Guess what? After a while, this woman, a man from the UK, saw her in a picture. He said, I love you. I want to marry you. I want your son. I'll give you British passport. I'll, I'll sponsor you. Big opportunity again. As he told me, everybody in the family, they are married, married, married. Look at this. He came out of me. I have a couple of mine. I think this, this man, you know, this is the will of God. I said, well, it's okay. And we pray again. We are praying God spoke again. I said, Lord, now this one now is dangerous. Because this one, if the thing does not come to pass, he will say, you make me miss my opportunity. I said, hey. God says, speak it. But you know, sometimes you have to dare. You have to just close your eyes and believe it. And I give the word. When I give it, he said, okay. I believe you. Everybody start calling her fool, 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 fool. Until one day, church after church, I keep confirming the word. It's going to come. So, so some people like, uh, they were here, they were there, they were there. But until one particular week, I said, somebody is on his way. Suddenly, he's just going to come up. And you see, and that was exactly how it happened. They got married, and I was wondering, and guess what? Can I tell you Guess what? Both of them are doing the work of God. He's married. They used to hold hands to pray. These people are doing great things. And I even prophesied, I told her that your husband is not he's gonna be a missionary. He'll go to Senegal. I even prophesied that everything happened. He went to Senegal. So you see, this is there's accountability here. When you prophesy somebody and say that you marry a white man, you'll be waiting for the prophecy to come to pass. If it doesn't come to pass, it's going to come back to you. You're a liar. <laughs> so you see, this thing here, this thing is serious. It's very serious. Thing. That's the reason why it's safer. It's safer to function in the gift of prophecy than to function in prophetic ministry. Because the gift of prophecy, huh, you have something to lose. It's a gift of utterance. God is with you. He will strengthen you. He will, he will, he will put you. There's no revelation in the gift of prophecy. No, it's a gift of utterance. You see, that's what I'm talking about. The gift of utterance. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And it is to, it's for exhortation, comfort, and um, uh, the Bible says that he that prophesies, we get unto men unto exhortation, edification, and comfort. So that's what the gift of prophecy. So you comforted someone. 
How many of you several times somebody came to you and tell you, God tell you, be strong, he is with you, and you encourage. That's what it's all. You have nothing to lose there. But when you start telling things, they're going to happen in the future. Like, that's, that's critical. I see. So this is where the gift of prophecy is. This is, I think this is where I'm going to stop. Let me just take the two and I don't know. And I just close. That's the gift give of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is a gift of honors. Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are nine. Out of the nine, there are four of those gifts that are called or oh, the prophetic gifts. The prophetic gifts are word of wisdom. Word of knowledge. Designing of spirit. Designing of spirits. Gift of prophecy. Then you have five. You have tongues and interpretation. Tongues plus interpretation. Now, why tongues plus interpretation is, is also part of the prophetic gift is because when you speak in tongues and you interpret what you say, it becomes the prophecy. That becomes a prophecy. Okay? I don't know whether anyone has the gift here where you speak in tongues and after you interpret what you say. So these are the five prophetic gifts. Out of those, imagine the Holy Spirit is so prophetic. Out of the nine gifts, five are prophetic. These are the prophetic gifts. I see. So now the gift of prophecy, which is here, has no revelation. But it is a door by which all the other eight gifts. The gift of healing can operate in the gift of prophecy. I see. Working of miracles can operate through the gift of prophecy. It is the it is the door to all these gifts. That's the reason why when God wants to use you in the case of the Holy Spirit, the first gift you will see is the gift of prophecy. After other gifts will start flowing through that. You see. So it's a powerful gift. It's a gift of utterance. Utterance. It's an inspirational gift. It's a vocal gift. We are you are speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. You are prophesying by, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's so aesthetic. It's so aesthetic that sometimes people are overwhelmed. Ah, 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 they're overwhelmed. They're not saying. Sometimes they even start crying. I see. But the prophetic office, and you know the gift of prophecy is safer than the prophetic office. Do you know why? It's safer because the gift of prophecy, when you are prophesying, everything you are saying. Is coming from the spirit because he gives you utterance and you speak. So he gives everything. But in the prophetic office, you are in absolute control of everything. To a point that even what is revealed to you, God leaves it to your discretion whether to say it or not. And sometimes some prophets make the mistake of saying it, and instead of helping, they don't help, they wash in the matter. For example, now, if God saw someone, if God saw you as a prophet, that your husband is cheating on you, if you're a wise prophet, you will not say it. If you say you have destroyed that man, and God will hold you responsible. So the wise thing you will do is to use wisdom and talk to them, talk to them, and then they will go to the Say, brother, I have seen this. Repent. If you don't repent, I will tell your wife. I just your way. Thank you, Sansa. Very good. See, you have saved the marriage. But because of many prophets don't have that discretion, they have separated marriages, destroyed homes. And, and, and can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? God will judge them for that. That's why he's being the That's why to even be a prophet, you need to be trained. You need to have the wisdom and the maturity to know what to do with the revelation you receive. Because revelation, they are very special. Very, very special. And look at, look at, look at, look at something. Can I tell you something? 
Why is it that bank managers and doctors, part of their ethics is confidentiality? Why? Because they're dealing with secrets. You cannot just tell anybody. You have to keep it. Because you, can, you can cause problems. That's the way the prophet is also. Are you anything? Now, you have number four. Please, please, just give me ten minutes around, around this talk. Huh? Just turn around. I know my time is over. Number four is the functionality. Oh my God, I love this. The functionality of the prophet. Ha! The personality of the prophet. Praise God. Am I boring you? Praise God. The personality of the prophet. Hello. Now, let me put these two together. I, 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 I can put it together at the same time. Okay? And you have the prophetic ministry. That's number five. There is the functionality of the prophet and there is the office or ministry of the prophet. They are not the same. So there are some people that you think they are in the office of the prophet but they are not in the office. They just have the personality of the prophet. Let me say something. Go to, go to Romans chapter 2. Romans number 12. Are you there? Can I suck you? Can I tell you something? Can I suck you? Listen to me. Do you know, sister, do you know that every member of the church is gifted? There is no member of the church who is not gifted. Let me ask you a question. The church is akin to the human body. Is that right? Is there any part of the body that resists it? Is there any part of your body that does not have a function? So which member of the church? Listen to me. This is what many pastors don't understand. And that's the reason why their church is struggling. If the pastor would train every member of the church their gift, the church will grow by itself. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. You see, you see the church a pastor. Just give us 10 years. We will take over the whole gap. Do you know why? Huh? Something is going to happen. You will not see me doing crusades, but you will see other people holding crusades. Because I'm not jealous or afraid to allow other people to pass on their gift. If somebody can prophesy more than me, I'll tell them to go and prophesy. Let me say that. Because my job is not to, is not to fight them from passing their gift. It's to raise them to pass on their gift. For the perfect thing. <laughs> you know again? Okay, wait. Listen. This is the reason why a lot of ministers are not growing. You will see a man that is so gifted in a church. So gifted. He has a gift that the general overseer does not have. And the man is blocking him. After blocking him, he gets frustrated and he goes and starts his own. There was no need for him to start his own. All you have to do is give him the platform. He will, he will not leave you. He will stay with you. And honor him. Do you know that? Do you know that I'm afraid? Even the way I talk to the people that God has given me. So, man, if I, for example, now, Brother Roland, I know he's anointed. I'm afraid. I'm careful the way I talk to him. Do you know why? He's anointed. The Bible says, talk of my anointed. So, you think now you are the boss. You talk to you anyhow. No. He's anointed. So, I have to be careful how I talk to him. Because if I talk to him, I'm touching the anointed. That's why David did not touch Saul. Even though Saul was wrong. Let's, let's go on. Praise God. Verse 4. Romans chapter 12, verse 4. For 
as we have many members in one body, as we have many parts, the word is say members. You see, King James, when he say members, now he's talking about parts. And members is also correct because your hand belongs to you. Though. It, it belongs to you. Your eyes belongs to you. It's not your eyes. So you have many, he said, as we have many parts in one body, then he said, and all parts, all members, not the same office. The word office means here, a function. So he's dealing here with functionality. That's what he's dealing here with, functionality. So I'm telling you, does the eyes have the same function as the ears? No. So he went on to say that if the whole body was an eye, where would be the hearing? See, some churches, they're in problem. They're in trouble because they know why. They only have a pastor, but they don't have a prophet. So the devil can enter any, any, anyhow and mess the church up because the pastor is not the one that has revelation. It's a prophet. So if there was a prophet, the prophet would say, there's a witch here. Let's deal with the witch. So churches are not protected because they're in trouble. Why? Because if the whole body is only an eye, is that body complete? You see, it's, it's something here. Let, let, let me stay. Let me stay here so that I will not just look at it. He, he, he said, "Look at what he, he said." So we, so he's comparing. This is a comparison. He's comparing the body to the church. We. He said, "So we, being many, are what one body in Christ, and everyone member one of another." Members one of another. Look at the next verse. Look at what he said. He said, having them gifts. Having them gifts. Who have the gifts? All of us. He said, grace is given to every man. I tell you to the measure of the gift of Christ. That means that everyone in the body of Christ is gifted with something. So he said, having them gifts different. So that means our gifts differs. Some people, their gift is singing. When she was singing, man, I love that voice. When she was singing, man, I was in the spirit. Oh, she got that. See? That's a gift. <laughs> you see? I like it when he sings that, 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 that day. It will not be long. When he sings that song, oh my God, I feel like I'm in heaven. We have gift offering. You see, having gifts different according to the grace that is given to us. Now look what he said. He said, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. That means that this prophecy he's talking about is the functionality of the prophet. So this particular guy in the body of Christ, he is gifted with the functionality of the prophet. That means he can function as a prophet, but he's not the prophet. Other words, that this guy, he can flow in the prophetic gifts. He can give word of knowledge. He can give word of wisdom. He can put in the gift of prophecy. He can even see visions. But he's not a prophet. He had the, only had the personality of a prophet. And he's giving that gift for a purpose. To build the body. To build the body. So this one is different. From Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets. That's different. That's the office. Are you feeling this thing now? So, the personality of the prophet is to prophesy. But prophesying does not make you a prophet. So, then, who is the prophet then? I tell you, you know the difference between. The one who is personal in the personality of the prophet and the one who is a prophet. Do you know the difference? I'll show you the difference. I'm going to show you the difference between these two. The office, the one who has the office, I will tell you what's the difference. Let me show you. First Corinthians chapter 14. And I'll close here because this thing, I'm taking all I'm taking all your time. First Corinthians chapter 14. Verse. 29. From verse 29. Verse 29. Are you there? He said what? He said, let the prophets what? He's speaking to who? 
He's speaking to prophets. He said, let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. You see, you see what I'm telling you? He's a judge. Okay. Then he now said, if anything be revealed, that means prophets this will be with revelation. Prophets are given revelation. If anything be revealed to an other that's seated by, let them first hold his peace. Wait until this one is finished. Then you also give your own. He has to be order. That's what they say. Order. Protocol. Now he now said, He said, For ye may all prophesy. Now this one is different. Every one of you can prophesy. But let the prophet speak. So that means just because you can prophesy, doesn't mean you are a prophet. But everyone can prophesy. So prophesying makes you a prophet. And just because you can function in word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and give revelation, does it mean you are a prophet? No, you are prophet in personal way. So this is where you know who a prophet is. Look at it. Look at what he said next. He said, For you may all prophesy one by one, that all may be comforted, that all may learn, all may be comforted. Then he said, And the spirits of the prophets. Do you notice he said spirits and prophets, yes, are subject to the prophet. That means the one in the prophetic office, he has something that is called the spirit of the prophet. That's what makes him a prophet. He has what is called the spirit of a prophet, and that spirit is subject to him. That means that he is the one that controls that spirit. So then, what is the spirit of a prophet? And who is the spirit of a prophet? I will not touch that one. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, you know what? Wait, 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 relax, wait, 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 wait. This thing is very deep. It's too deep, I don't, I'm afraid to touch. Okay, okay, do you know what? Wait, 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 relax. Because it is too deep, I'm afraid to touch it, so I'm going to just show you small. Just small. Can I show you something? Let me see something. Go to numbers at the level. Eleven from verse sixteen. Now let me give you a picture here. Moses here, you know, Moses was leading about six million people because it was not only the children of Israel that Moses was leading. The children of Israel, you know, because the children of Israel in God's census, when God is taking census, he does not count women, only men. So the men were counted that came out of Egypt. They were about six hundred thousand. The women and the children were not counted. And apart from that, there was a mixed multitude that followed them. So there were about six million. So Moses was leading about six million people. This is the greatest pastor in the Bible. A pastor of six million people. And one day, the mixed multitude stare the children of Israel and they begin to complain. And they begin to complain. And Moses said, God, kill me out of that. He is a discouraged pastor. My pastor is discouraged. Why God? Why do God? It does not happen to you before. You are a pastor. Okay, you are not the only one. Moses did it in the Bible. Moses said, God, keep me. What have I done? Do I give back to all these people? And God said to Moses, You ready? Look at what God did. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them to the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Now, what did he say? He said, and I will come down and I will talk with thee there. He said, and I will take off the spirit which is on thee. And I will put it on them. Wow. 
Wait, wait. Let's say this to me. Let's say this to me. I want you to be very careful. What spirit is this? What spirit is this? You know, you don't understand this thing very well, but you understand something. Let me let me let me give you an idea. Okay, watch here. Okay, the class came up. He said, and they will pay the body to get up so that we do not pay the body. Why did God take the spirit and give it? Well, he did it. He has to take it from who? And he said, I will just take a measure of it. He said, Mess, I'm putting on them. And when God did it, all of them began to come aside. They began to function their process. So that spirit, who has it? It's one that has the spirit. When you meet the prophet in the office of the prophet, he can impart. He can impart that same spirit that he has. He can put it on you. And when he put it on you, you will start functioning like him. And that's not the only thing. See, this is dangerous. That's how it is. It's so, it is so dangerous that the prophet can take that thing and put it in a bottle. He can take it and put it in water. Inside water. They spread it inside the water. You will take that water, pour it, and the spirit that is upon that prophet it will be there. Why prophets are dangerous? They're dangerous. The spirit of the prophet is so dynamic that you can be standing here and the spirit will take you somewhere. Every time you see somebody prophesying and he said, As I'm talking to you here, I'm in churches now. He's a prophet. He has the spirit of the prophet. Because only someone who has the spirit of the prophet can do that. The one who has the gift of prophecy, the first of the prophet can't do that. You can say, I'm, I'm, wait. Wait, 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 wait. That can be the most shaky thing. He said, wait, wait, wait. I'm hearing something, I'm hearing something. He said, but wait, do you know why? That person, this person, has limitations. Do you know why? Because he prophesied according to the proportion of faith. He cannot prophesy beyond his faith. But the prophet functions beyond the realm of faith. Do you know why a prophet do, 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 do you know why a prophet functions beyond the realm of faith? The one who prophesied by the personality of the prophet, he hears a name. Can he get to So if it's very wise, if it's very, if it's very, very wise, he will say, is there anyone? He said, I'm just asking a question. I'm just a professor. Don't worry. Is there anyone called Khadija too? He said, if he's smart, but some people, they're not smart. They will say, who is Khadija too? And nobody's smart. Who is Khadija too? And then your confidence, boom, is knocked down. Up. You, say, um, you know what? It is well. Let, let us go. You see, you see, this is now that person has a personality, so you can call names. You see, the prophet, brother, the prophet will see the name, he will see Gloria on your head. He says, You are Gloria, he doesn't doubt because he's, he's seeing it. How can you doubt when you're seeing the thing on his head? Why? Because he had the spirit. You know, Amia, listen, listen, listen to me. I'm very sincere. Me, I don't know how to lie. I, tell, I used to tell them. I tell them, even the people, when I teach it, I tell them that I don't have a spirit of a prophet. I tell them, I don't have it. And that's the truth. I don't. I don't. Prophets are dangerous. Do you know why prophets are dangerous? Do you know why? Let me tell you why prophets are dangerous. Prophets are dangerous because a prophet is in the place of God. That's the reason why a prophet is never anointed. He was born with it. They are ordained from their mother's womb. A prophet stands in the place of God. A prophet comes to tell you that God knows you. 
That's why he will tell you or if he will tell you where your grandfather is coming from. By the time he's finished, he will say, Hey! God has finished me because the prophet stands in the place of God. But you see, it takes, it takes a lot of process to get there. That's the reason why prophets are raised. And who is the one who raised them? God himself. He said, I will raise up a prophet. Raise up means that I'm going to take the prophet and I'll bring him to my place, to my dimension. So whenever I see a prophet, they, see, prophesy does not make you a prophet. No, no. Let me tell you what makes you a prophet. A prophet does not only prophesy. A prophet can speak to your height. Your height will increase. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not prophesying. I feel, I feel, listen to me, listen to me. A real prophet, when a real prophet comes, he doesn't come and tell you, I'm seeing a problem, I'm seeing this. No, 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 no. He come and tell you, I want to deal with the problem. A real prophet doesn't tell you, I want to, I've seen the problem, I've seen He said, let me fix it. Do you know why? He has to. Elijah, Elijah, what did he do? He said, there will be no rain according to my, not God, he said, my, he said, my word. That's a prophet. They have authority. Authority, authority, they have authority. A prophet can come to the Gambia and shoot the heaven. They have authority. Because he stands in the place of God. In fact, he is called the mouthpiece of God. And to be a prophet, huh? A prophet. What does not open the eyes of a prophet? He doesn't open his eyes. No, 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 no. Prophets, the eyes are not open. Because the eyes don't need to be open. Do you notice that God opened the eyes of the young man, but he didn't open the eyes of Elijah? Prophets, God don't open the eyes. Do you know why? Prophets, they have the eyes of God. They have God's eyes. They see what God sees. That's why when God is speaking to a prophet, he will tell the prophet, what seest thou? He didn't tell them. He doesn't tell them. What do you see? The prophet said, I see. God said, you are seeing well because you are seeing what I'm saying. Let me stop here. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, this is the word I have for you. The word I have for you is be patient. Because God is raising you. He's going to bring you to a place where He will be glorified in you and through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Dear saints of God, we believe this message has been a blessing to your soul. Please to share your testimony with us. Contact us on plus 220 or 3064-155 or 3321-694. You can also send us an email at arcofchange1 at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook at Arc of Change. Arc of Change Ministry, changing lives transforming nations.
Take me back. 